Some of the games I've put in this list, this is basically a top 10 games of 2020. Some of them are very controversial, but it just goes to show from the last year how bad the games have been, how much the industry's falling off. I don't have access to PlayStation at the moment, so I haven't been able to play Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us Part 2, any of the games like that, Spider-Man, that sort of stuff which I know people are going to say are amazing games. So this list is just from what I have played. They are in no order whatsoever, this is just my top 10. And we are starting off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. When I was given this game by Ubisoft, I wasn't expecting, like, too much. I've never really been into the Assassin's Creed franchise, but I love Vikings and I thought I'd give it a go. It was something new for me to explore. And I was pleasantly surprised with what I did play of Valhalla. I do need to get into more of it again. But it was a, it was a very good game, and I'd say it's definitely in the top 10. Then moving on to Fall Guys... And Fall Guys was a major hit for a little while, and then it just it dropped off very fast. I don't even know what caused the drop-off, possibly other games coming into the limelight, and there were a lot of hackers, which really, really ruined the experience. But out of the games I've played this year, it does fall into the top 10. Number 3 is Cyberpunk 2077, and that's in the top 10 list due to obvious reasons. It's a really, really good game, but at the same time... There has been far too many problems, way more than what should have been, especially after all of the marketing from CD Projekt Red and all of the trust people had in that company. But it's still in top 10 because the game itself is amazing. Number 4 goes to Call of Duty Warzone. Even though I haven't played too much, I've taken like months and months off playing the game. I've just actually recently started getting back into it. I don't know if you'll see any videos for it, or many videos should I say, but... It's been fun. It's one of my favourite Battle Royales. I do wish they could do a little bit more with it, but overall, it's still a very good experience. Number five is SnowRunner. Even though there's been a lot of bugs in this game and a lot of issues, there's been delays on the DLC and stuff, it was still a very enjoyable experience as soon as the game launched. I put hours and hours into it with my mates. We completed every contract and task available in the game, like from the base game at least. And then after we had done everything, the enjoyment kind of dropped off. But overall, it's a very good game. Number six is Man Eater. And it's it's a good game. Like I'm, I'm not saying it's a terrible game. It was very, very short, incredibly repetitive. But overall, it was an enjoyable experience just getting to be a shark and wreak havoc. Just absolutely destroy civilians, boats, and things like that. There were a couple of secrets. I actually managed to complete every single thing in the game. 100% completion on that game. Then number seven is going to be Fast and Furious. No, don't worry, I'm joking. Crossroads is not making it into this list. It is one of the worst games of the year. Number seven is Formula One 2020. I didn't play too much of it, and the only reason this is actually in the list is because there weren't too many other options, and I did really enjoy what they did with the game this year. You have the entire My Team mode. You can create your own team of drivers. You can actually drive with your team, and it was a lot of fun to play that. I've never been a huge fan of Formula One, but I did really enjoy the My Team mode. Number eight, and this game just shows how much this list is a, a mess. Like, 2020 has been a really bad year for gaming. Number eight is Marvel's Avengers. And I just want to put it out there that this is only based on the story part of the game, which still could have been miles better than what it was. The online part after the story absolutely sucked. It lasted a few hours, then just straight up boredom. The devs have been adding a lot of single player stuff in. There's loads of bugs still in the game. They currently have plans to release two Hawkeye characters. And the game as a whole is a mess, but I did enjoy the story part. It was a lot more immersive than what I thought it was going to be initially. Moving on to number 9, and that is going to be Watch Dogs Legion. I personally enjoyed the story. Gutted about the online delay, 
But I feel this has to make it into the list, even if I didn't thoroughly enjoy it, just because I stream the entire game from start to finish on YouTube, and I don't normally do live streams at all, let alone play through an entire game. I've always been inconsistent with series and stuff, but Watch Dogs Legion managed to hold my attention enough for me to get through the entire game on live stream. So that's why that's made it into the list. I did enjoy my time on the game. It could have been so much better, especially after their like full year of extra work they could put into it. I, I feel they didn't put anywhere near as much effort as what they could have done. And then number 10 has to be the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Zombies. And I know that's not a game, but I'm not going to put Black Ops Cold War as a whole because I really didn't enjoy what I played of the campaign. I actually had a game-breaking bug where there was some like internal server script error thing. It was a problem that stopped me being able to play the campaign. It fixed itself the day after. I played a little bit. Didn't really enjoy the campaign. Multiplayer, in my opinion, is the worst Call of Duty multiplayer we've had in years. But the zombies part of Black Ops Cold War, I really, really enjoyed. They did amazing with that this time round. And that is my entire list. As I said, 2020 has been a really, really bad year for games. But we are so close to 2021 now. And hopefully things are going to change around the world and hopefully games are going to start looking a lot better, having better mechanics, less bugs. We need to try and get rid of the live service games. They are like a big part of the problem. But we also, at some point in 2021, should have the release of Unreal Engine 5. So games could start making a turnaround and could start being a, a much better experience. And before some of you say, oh, you played a lot of this game, why is this not in the list? You've covered this game this year. I'm basing this on games that have released in 2020 and modes and stuff because there aren't really enough games that are that good that have released this year. But on that note, we're going to leave the video there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. If you've got a list, I'll be happy to read through it all. That's going to do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it.